Thank you, Becky, and thank you all for joining to our webinar about bridging the gap between predictive maintenance and diagnostics. Um, you may have not thought about it until now, but I assure you that after um, this webinar, you will pay some thought about the future of both predictive maintenance, diagnostics, and the combination between them. Um, now, we at Samsung uh, are putting great deal of effort into, into this um, uh, topic. Uh, Samsung has 114 years of experience in the process industry. Uh, we are what we call smart in the flow control, providing all kind of uh, uh, flow control um, parts, including mostly valves of all types, specifically for, for the process industry, for 4,500 employees worldwide. Um, and at, um, during 2018, uh, Samsung did a very smart move which relates uh, directly to our webinar and uh, acquired Percognize. Now, Percognize is a, a software company coming from AI and machine learning uh, based, uh, based in Israel uh, with great technology, uh, basically for predictive uh, monitoring of, of process plant. Now, the thing that we're doing in the last three years from the acquisition is basically combining the two worlds of one looking at the instrumentation, looking at the parts themselves, um, and doing all the diagnostics to those parts while at the same time uh, providing a predictive maintenance solution and trying to um, basically combine, uh, combine the two. Um, so when we're talking predictive maintenance, uh, we are all used to this kind of, um, uh, of a graph. So basically when the failure starts, it's very, very small. As it progress, um, the um, uh, signs are becoming more and more apparent um, until you, the time you can actually hear it, smell it, and see it, which is uh, uh, in the worst case, case scenario. And of course, um, uh, when you catch some things earlier, uh, the cost of repair, the downtime, the availability of the plant, and all these kind of things are getting much better and better uh, as you as you move forward. But behind this graph, there is another paradigm, okay, or another assumption. And actually, for every part um, that we're looking at, there is also a preset preventive maintenance um, um, program, okay? It may be you have to replace it every year, it may be you have to replace it every X hours, or it may be any, um, any type of uh, preset preventive uh, maintenance. Now, the assumption here is that if we got to this part of a failure, it's still we did what we were supposed to do. We did replace it on time, but still some parts fail, um, although we just, uh, we just changed them. Or well, we changed them on time, but still there is a failure. So there are two paradigms here. One is looking at, okay, let's do it on a periodic preventive basis. And the second assumes that there will always be failures. And if there is one, we want to discover it as soon as possible. Now, this is basically from our perspective, um, the uh, line between what we call diagnostics and what we call predictive maintenance. Because predictive maintenance or predictive monitoring for us is to catch the problems as early as possible. Okay, avoid the, the, the consequences. Now, at the same time, diagnostics is about being able to replace this preset preventing, preventive criteria every year, every two years, every three years into something which is personal. Personal to the specific valve, to the specific pump, to the specific heat exchanger, and so on and so forth. So our assumption here is that this preset um, time that was done after experimenting, um, you know, on, on lab conditions can be optimized into something that takes into consideration the real life happening of this specific equipment part. And this is the diagnostic part. So the monitoring assumes failures will always happen and let's catch them early. The diagnostics assumes that let's try to basically optimize this criteria of when we should replace each part 
and adjust it to the real happening of this specific part. Now, at this point, um, it's important to also think what are our potential candidates. Because if I'm looking at you know the biggest compressor in the in the plant or some turbine that I have there, probably our ability to make significant changes um, to the um, uh, periodic preventive maintenance that we're doing there is very limited. It's very limited not because of the technology, it's not because of the equipment, it's because of the risk. The risk of pushing the compressor a few months or a few years forward in terms of maintenance and of course saving a lot of money by doing that but taking the risk that this compressor will fail is something that it will take a long time to, for companies to actually um, do and accept that. But at the same time, we have plenty of other equipment um, which we are uh, now replacing just on, you know, on, on the scheduled uh, uh, maintenance, which could be uh, or can be uh, replaced only on demand according to their specific need and specific characteristics. Okay, all these pumps, valves, um, you know, motor fans, and and then and, and so many other things. Now, some of them will already apply the run to fail technology, a run to fail uh, maintenance strategy, and in this case, probably our analytical monitoring will help us very. Uh, much in, in identifying this failure, not when it actually fails, but a little bit earlier than that and making the right uh, changes on time. Okay, but for most of the equipment, we just replace them on demand. So today, we're standing in a situation where monitoring is basically available. Okay, we are always doing monitoring by the control system. Okay, the pre-programmed uh, conditions in the DCS, which is not very helpful, but uh, you know it will prevent our failures to become a real catastrophes. Okay, we the, the limits there will stop us from you know um, creating a, um, um, significant damage. Hopefully, uh, to that you need to add things like like SamGuard, our product, which is AI-based. We are basically looking at the same things, but we're not applying the pre-programmed conditions. We are monitoring the plant according to its own behavior. Um, and this is, again, trying to catch a failure as early as possible. On the diagnostic side, we usually see very, very little progress until now, and we'll talk why. But there is a movement toward asynchronous maintenance based on the each part condition. And this is the future, and this is a significant uh, saving. And, and for that, we are at our part, since Samsung is a valve company, um, we produce many valves, and we know how to identify when the valve is going to fail. So our product of uh, Sam Valve Diagnostics is actually providing us the capability um, to, to tell you in advance to move the needle um, on the uh, on the maintenance and, and even today what we're doing um, since asynchronous maintenance is not is not a common thing uh, we're trying to um, help uh, customers during or before turnarounds so turnarounds is always a very busy time there is always you get to the end of the turnaround and you haven't completed all the tasks and you try to prioritize which things are uh, are really needed and which things are can be can be delayed and what we're, we're providing as a service as part of the sam valve diagnostics is um is a report telling you for all your valves which are the which ones would need um you know would need maintenance for sure during the next turnarounds which ones look pretty good and uh, which ones are really uh, untouched and uh, you know if you have time uh, you can uh, uh, you can maintain them but but if not you just do the minimal um, and we can do that based on the diagnostics data okay so this is an example how we starting to move toward asynchronous maintenance where it's possible now as part of prioritizing basically um, um, the turnarounds 
But in the future, we think and hope that, that many of the parts in the plant, you will be able to replace them only when needed and actually um, turn these m months or two months or even in some cases a, a longer period of, of downtime into a continuous maintenance uh, uh, work which is based on the health of each of the parts. Now, when we look at the monitoring, basically the data for that is, is there. Okay, we have thousands of sensors kept together, um, you know, measuring temperature, uh, flow, pressure, differential pressure, and so on and so forth. Okay, this data is there. So in terms of monitoring, um, finding those failures when they're, sm when they're small, these, this is already measured. The data is measured. And since many of those failures really reflected in the process data, our ability through our AI to monitor this and tell you in advance, yeah, okay, you did maintain some time, still, you may, um, this part doesn't look good. It's going in the wrong direction. Uh, you probably need to check it based on the process data. This is available, available today. Um, and we're doing it by looking at the historical data, usually 13 months of historical data. We combine it together with a very um, a deep uh, model that we created or a, uh, a digital twin, so to speak, um, model of the plant, which together with the machine learning provides us the ability to really look through these um, this process data, identify the anomalies, but still come to the conclusion which part is now um, is now um, close to uh, or is uh, likely to uh, uh, to fail uh, in the near future? But this is based on the process data. We are there with Samgard, taking all those thousands of sensors, analyzing them, coming with a few alerts, a few alerts a day. But the interesting thing is the equipment internal data. Because for example, for Samsung, we have smart uh, positioners which hold hundreds, if not more of data points about the, the, the valve. Um, you know, internal pressure, uh, strokes, uh, how many times it went up and down and, and so on and so forth. This information is actually collected into this, into this positioner in the field. Okay, so we have now the process data and we also have the equipment internal data, which is used for diagnostics. And in addition to that, <clears throat> we may have the uh, all kind of new sensors like vibrations and other. And here, what you see um, in the picture is uh, our new uh, Focus One valve, which is you know, kind of um, uh, the valve of the future, which actually have everything inside in, you know, um, uh, both sensors, uh, pro process sensors, but also uh, many sensors that are monitoring the valve itself. Now, the information here is not going through the DCS uh, into the store, and the information here in most cases is going to the cloud, or it's going to some other source of data. So when we look at this combination between our ability to um, look at the process data and the new data, we kind of starting to understand that there is some um, merge that we need to be that will be that will be done. And actually, this merge is is, is part of four uh, main challenges. Okay, the first challenge is getting the, out, the data out. Okay, today uh, most plants have a DCS. Um, and it's very, very clear that this is, would not be the uh, uh, exclusive data provider of the future. Okay, I'm not an expert at that, and I cannot say whether it will be the open, uh, the internet in the field, or any wireless, or LAN, or any other communication method. But it's very, very clear that there is a lot of data which is available in the field, available in all these positioners and other equipment. Um, which can provide us a great value when it comes to diagnostics. And it's probably too heavy 
for the DCS to collect and uh, and and also um, put the uh, the control of the plant into into risk of uh, of uh, data uh, conjunctions. So it's very clear we have a, now today a problem of communication, which is actually getting the data out from this uh, equipment. But it will be solved in the future, and many uh, many groups um, are working on it, and we at Samsung are participating in in many of those uh, uh, work groups. The second part uh, is data integration. Okay, we get data from sensors. You know, it's a time series data. Um, whenever it changes by X percent, uh, we record the point, or the, the CERN records a point, and then that's it. Now, um, on the on the positioner. There, there is there is data which is by time, but there is also data which is static, and there is also data which is changing or or flags and so on and so forth. And we will need to integrate this uh, this data somehow. From our perspective, this is not a big deal. Okay, to integrate data is not the thing that we are that we are mostly worried about. Um, it's work. Yeah, uh, but still, it's uh, it's something which is uh, which is basically doable. The third point is the analytical integration. I'll talk about this in a, in a second. And the fourth, which I'll talk uh, later, is about the operational issues, because this diagnostics and, uh, and monitoring issues together, or combining them together, may create some kind of challenge. So if we look at the analytical integration, basically we have here on the top the process data coming and streaming, and we have the internal data within the device. Now, the internal data within the device, even if we manage to get it out into the cloud, is looking at this device. Okay, it doesn't have the uh, uh, process data, it doesn't have the, the all the information about what's the happening of the plant. Uh, inside the device. So the device knows only about itself. And this is creating a limitation on the ability to provide um, accurate results about the, the, the situation of the valve pump or whatever other equipment. So there need to be some kind of, um, of understanding how the process data can be used together with the diagnostics data. Now, I'm not talking about using it in the sense of how we combine it in the database, not in the technical perspective, but in the, um, in the ability to understand that this valve, as an example, is actually influenced by something else that is happening upstream or downstream or, uh, or whatever, and to take into consideration this uh, holistic uh, situation while diagnosing the valve. And for that, it's not important to just combine the data. You actually need to understand what is affecting, <coughs> what is causing things within your, uh, within the specific equipment. And for that, our ability in SAMGuard to actually build a graph of the plant, which provides all the causality between things and putting their our valve pump uh, heat exchanger or whatever as as a node in this graph and providing us the understanding of which other things are actually influencing it is a great um, is a great map is a great uh, baseline for this uh, for this uh, combination. So in that sense, we really believe that. Um, our ability to map the plant in a very, very fast way uh, will be a, a, an important pillar in the combination between diagnostic data and process data in order to come to reliable, um, reliable conclusions uh, for each of them. Now, the um, integration here can be done at, the, at different levels. Okay. The first level that we see is the um, is actually the, the the level that we're doing now. Okay, if we're suspecting a problem based on the uh, on the process data, we're using the diagnostics in order to verify this data and try to understand 
what is the real root cause. So if, for example, in our case with the with the valve uh, monitoring, which is part of SamGuard and the valve diagnostic, uh, what we would do is that we see some kind of behavior uh, with the valve when we look at the OP, PV, and, and set point uh, from the Sorian. And then if we get the diagnostic data, we're really able to go into the root cause and say, ah, here is the problem. This is what we see. Okay. Um, the other option, which is more futuristic because uh, we don't have the data, diagnostic data online, is to have the, uh, uh, the diagnostic algorithm say, okay, I see a problem here. And then actually qualify it or disqualify it by looking at the process data. Yeah, I see that something, let's say, uh, vibration is going up, uh, but the process data tells me that the plant is actually working now harder than it worked before. So, you know, this level of vibration is actually acceptable. So if you're looking only at the vibration, you will probably trigger an alert. When you look at it together with the process data, you're actually um, not getting an alert because it's not needed. Okay. So this model is basically what we call the master-slave model. Okay, it's simple. Um, it allows you know we work um, against the, our uh, valve diagnostics, but in the same way we can work with uh, any pump diagnostics or any other diagnostics uh, that any vendor um, uh, would bring to the table, and um, and the integration there is is really is really seamless. Um, so it would allow any vendor to bring their secret sauce, their algorithms to really diagnose their equipment together with the ability to, to understand how the process data uh, or what's happening in the plant. Okay, and, and it's a very well formatted uh, data. So this is the, um, the first uh, option. The other option is, is single analytics. And in single analytics, the ability is to analyze the process data plus the specific algorithms or, or vice versa. And, and why is this important? I'm showing you here, um, just from one of our models, uh, influences between uh, pressure difference, okay, and vibration. Um, so the fact that the pressure difference is actually influencing the vibration it, it, or, or the pressure difference is not captured by this uh, um, um, data or this uh, vibration uh, uh, sensors which are sent to the cloud. Only the combination of both of them would really provide us a meaningful uh, alerts uh, which, are, which we would not include those false alarms uh, which we usually see, oh, the vibration went up. Okay, but yeah, of course, because we did some kind of change in the pressure different or whatever, um, or because we had a problem with the uh, with the filter there or whatever. Okay, so the ability to have a single analytics is for for sure valuable, although we see that in terms of progress, it will take us time to get there. Now. The last, uh, the last uh, uh, challenge that we want to talk about is the operational challenge. Okay, because today most of the alerts are going to the control room. Um, there are few, um, you know, usually it's offline vibration analysis or, of course, a periodic maintenance, which is done by the maintenance team. But basically, the operation room is looking at the control system and there they're getting their, their alerts. Um, and this is one system covering the entire plant. But think about tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow in your plant, you have, yeah, Samsung is great and it monitors its valves in the best way. Yeah, you also acquired some, you know, unimportant valves from, from, from another vendor and this vendor is also monitoring their valves. And then there is a few pumps from this vendor. And then, you know, two years later, the pumps the, from the other vendor were cheaper. So you bought those, so, and these, and this vendor is monitoring their uh, pump separately. So actually, if you're in a situation where each vendor is monitoring uh, their equipment separately, um, sooner than later, you'll find yourself with not one control system, but actually several alert system. Each of them is for a specific um, uh, vendor. Each of them has specific, you know, um, 
false false alarms and it will you know every system will have its false false alarms and each of them will require the attention of the team now who would be the team that is actually looking at these it's a big 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 question would it be the maintenance team would it be the control room would it be some other dedicated team of analytical monitoring this is a question which is still open and i assume just like in any other uh, question it will be uh, probably determined on a company by company or even plant by plant uh, um, structure but it would require your attention because if we're going into a situation where every vendor knows how to diagnose their equipment in the best way and we want to use these algorithms and each of them is actually uh, providing us the, the results and now we need to work with every separate vendor now for us it seems that this situation is not completely unacceptable and this is how we see samgard because the one nice thing about samgard is that we really know how to connect the dots within the plant okay samgard actually includes a complete map of the equipment and what it's causing what and what is affecting what so if like in the previous example um, in one of the previous slides when we saw that the differential pressure is affecting the vibration and the vibration is probably affecting some, something else and so on and so forth all these um, um, influences are captured within SAMGuard um, and this is captured together with the process data so now if you have a specific algorithm like we are having for uh, uh, for valves within Samson for as within some valve diagnostics we can feed this algorithm with the relevant process data not all the process data but the relevant process data those things which are really influencing the specific valve and then we can make a much better estimation of what is the health of this valve so what we would like to do in the future and this is what we're working very hard to uh, to complete is that we'll be able not just to see everything from the process data and monitor and catch those failures as early as possible but we will we'll be able to do just like we're doing today for the valves we'll be able to feed in the specific diagnostics of that part so this uh, specific diagnostic can tell us okay this part need a replacement although we still don't see a failure or we don't see signs of a failure within the process data but it will do it based not just on the diagnostic data but also the process data now if you add another algorithm from a pump vendor or from any other vendor or compressor and so on this algorithm will immediately talk with the rest of the map so it will immediately get the influences for that compressor or for that pump and I think this is the way forward if we're looking you know several years forward this will be the way to avoid the situation where each compressor each vendor will need to integrate to their equipment and also get the relevant process data and also understand which is the relevant process data that they need to take and um, and eventually provide the uh, alert system for the team in the plant that they will need to monitor this so uh, this situation must be avoided and what we're offering here is a gradual um, progress which allows you to take the process data and map your plant plug in the valves it's already built in and then additional vendors will come in yes plug them in as well and eventually you'll get a, a complete um, seamless integration between the diagnostics part which are based on the on the data from the equipment and the monitoring part which is based on the process data and this is a future which I think most plants can live with so with that with that I would like to thank you um, 
and open for the next uh, part of uh, asking you a few, uh, few questions um, and then answering uh, your question through the uh, Q&A. Thank you very much.